This is the Fair Use Notice. The material in this video is provided solely for educational and informational purposes. It may contain copyrighted material, the use of which has not specifically been authorized by the copyright owner. Infringement of copyright is not intended. The material is made, of, is made available to help educate people about health-related issues, and it is believed that, it, that this constitutes a fair use of any such copyrighted material as provided for in Title 17, Section 107 of the U.S. Copyright Law. The material is distributed without profit to those who would like to use such material for research and educational purposes. A lot of people don't believe Rick Simpson's story because they say if someone had cured cancer with THC, our healthcare industry would not withhold that information. In fact, here is a quote from Dr. West, Grace President, CEO, and Faculty Administrator at CancerGrace.org forums, referring, referring to the phoenixtears.ca website. So here's Cancer Grace forums. This right here, that's Dr. West, and this is his statement. I wouldn't really call that link a balanced assessment nor a careful, unbiased perspective, since it seems to me that he's invoking a collusion of just about everyone who doesn't accept hemp oil as being a tremendously favorable treatment. I personally doubt that a miraculous treatment for cancer could remain completely unknown and unheard, and unheard of by so many people. So would the healthcare industry really want the world to know about a cure for cancer, especially one so affordable? It's a huge loss for Pfizer, the largest healthcare fraud settlement in the history of the Department of Justice. The government was building a case against Pfizer for fraudulently marketing a drug that had raked in hundreds of millions of dollars in profits, a painkiller called Bextra. Pfizer aggressively marketed it for uses and in doses not approved by the FDA. All right. Sounds like a really overgrown drug dealer to me. I'm going to show you a few clips here, all of the same newscast. I encourage you to watch the full video. Even this newscast doesn't have all the information on the, bur on the murderous Bextra scam brought to you by Pfizer. In 2001, when the FDA approved Bextra, but only for limited use and only for menstrual cramps and arthritis. Even so, Pfizer sales reps promoted it illegally for surgical pain in higher doses, uses the FDA had rejected due to safety concerns. Doctors responded, instead of prescribing, say, ibuprofen at pennies a pill, they prescribed Bextra at nearly $3 a pill. Next clip. Did the sales rep know what they were doing was illegal? They said that the district manager approved it. They think it might not be legal, but if they don't make their numbers, they're not going to keep their job anyway. It brought Pfizer nearly a billion dollars in profits, and it cost us all because Medicare, Medicaid, and our private insurance picked up much of the tip. Approval process. Even though prosecutors said the illegal conduct was tolerated and encouraged by sales managers across the country, Pfizer escaped the ultimate punishment. Just as giant banks on Wall Street were considered too big to fail, Pfizer was considered too big to nail. Why? Because a company convicted of major fraud would automatically be kicked out of Medicare and Medicaid. Pfizer would no longer be allowed to bill any federal health programs for any of its products. It would be a corporate death sentence. As I said, there is so much to this story. I'm trying to keep it short and only show you highlights. Plus, this isn't my video. To watch the full video, please go to the link that will be provided at the bottom. And one of the things that they're talking about between the last clip and this next one, they're talking if Pfizer failed, failed that the patients would be left without medicine. What they fail to mention is that every other major, major pharmaceutical on earth could make these same drugs. When you go to the pharmacy and you get your $4 prescription, it's the same drug, different name. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Since shutting down Pfizer was unthinkable, Pfizer and the feds cut a deal. And here's how they did it. Pfizer, located here in New York, owns a company named Pharmacia Corporation, which owns another company called 
Pharmacia and Upjohn LLC, which owns Pharmacia and Upjohn Company LLC, which in turn owns Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated. What does Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated do? Nothing. It's a shell created to be a legal shield for Pfizer. In other words, if Pfizer was at risk of being convicted, the shell company would take the hit. Think of it as the great great grandson of the parent company. Birthday, March 27, 2007. Just in time to plead guilty in a kickback case against the company Pfizer had acquired a few years earlier. With that conviction, Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated, which had never sold so much as a single pill, was excluded from Medicare. Two years, years later, when Pfizer was in trouble with Bextra, Pharmacia and Upjohn Company Incorporated, the shell company, stepped up again and pleaded guilty. It was like having an imaginary friend, an imaginary bad guy, to take the rap. And Pfizer, too big to nail, is still doing business with the federal government. So Drew, what does Pfizer have to say about all this? Anderson, nothing on camera. After a lot of back and forth, we got a phone conversation with the company's chief compliance officer. He told us, look, Pfizer takes full responsibility for illegally promoting Bextra. And to prevent it from happening again, here's what Pfizer said it's done. It's set up a leading edge system. It monitors sales reps tracking prescription sales and proactively looking for signs that its people are illegally promoting these drugs. So are, are, is Pfizer doing this voluntarily? No. Not all voluntary. Pfizer, they had to sign what's called a corporate integrity agreement with the Department of Health and Human Services. Basically, the executives at Pfizer have to sign on the dotted line to say that their company is going to comply with the law. But I'm Okay, that's one bad apple. Surely our healthcare industry has my best interests at heart. Now, I'm not going to give up on the healthcare industry because of one profit-addicted company that got way too big to have to bother with people's well-being anymore virus they took the product off the market in the u.s and then they dumped it in france europe asia and latin america the medicine's called factor eight it was an inject an injection medicine that was used for hemophiliacs mostly children children had been born with an injection. hold, on, hold on mike so hold on hold on so you're yeah. telling me that bear knew that this drug was infected with the aids virus they yanked it from the market in america and then they dumped it in markets overseas they had to figure out a way joe to make a profit on a product that they could not sell in America. So they made a huge... I don't know about you, but I think this is exciting. This is like playing the lottery. You never know which drug is going to be the winner. I've, I've won a raffle before. This could be it, baby. We could win HIV. I, I think HIV is a bad thing. No. Are you sure? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. sure. Well, then... That... That's just horrifying. Sorry. Not to mention the side effects of all these drugs upon drugs upon drugs that they just keep pumping out. Most of which are more dangerous than what the drug is prescribed for in the first place. Talk about side effects. Bayer just made it abundantly clear that children's lives are just a minor side effect of profit. I think it's disgusting that not only were these businesses allowed to continue doing business, but that we the people of the world continue doing business with scum like that. Which brings us to another option, the Rick Simpson hemp oil option. We're flipping through a High Times magazine and come across an article on Rick Simpson, and it's saying these absurd things that a man has cured cancer with THC and cannabinoids. Then it went on to say that this same man was facing 20 years in prison. So I started getting newspapers and looking around for more information on this Rick Simpson guy who's curing cancer. I mean, this has got to be in all the big news, right? <clears throat> but there's no, nothing. It's nowhere. I looked on all the popular news network site, websites, I did searches on these websites, there's nothing. Then I ran across Run From The Cure on YouTube, hosted by Paula Gloria. By this time I was already not expecting anything earth shattering, because if they had really stumbled onto something, then it would have been in the news, right? Okay. Rick Simpson made some huge claims, which has to take guts when you're going on the world stage proposing a cure for cancer. At 8 minutes and 24 seconds into the movie, a very good question is asked. 
Rick Simpson answers this question and then takes a, and then makes a statement that made me realize how serious he was about this medicine and that I was going to be learning a lot more about it. The question is, what does hemp oil, hemp oil work on? Rick Simpson gives a short list of approximately 20 ailments and then he makes a statement, quote unquote, I would like someone to show me what it can't heal. I figure with a statement like that, someone is going to rise to the challenge. I really appreciated the beginning of the movie and what it said. So I'm going to show it to you and I want you to read it and let it sink in what it really says. For over a century, big business and pharmaceutical companies worldwide have withheld the cure for cancer and countless other medical conditions. All in the interest of personal profit. Rick Simpson rediscovered the cure for cancer and shared it with as many people as he could. And here's the kicker. This is the part that I really, really like. Free of charge. He bought all the equipment and, and ingredients to make the medicine that he gave away for free. You don't do that in a capitalistic society. I dare Pfizer or Bayer to create a cure for cancer and then give it to the people for free. That's my dare. He didn't put this in, in the movie, but he experienced an explosion making the oil himself. That's why he's so big on ventilation. So listen to what he says, he was burned. Go. When I was a kid, I had no idea that prescription drugs would get you high until someone told me. And I'm sure that there are plenty of kids that didn't know that the prescription pills would get you high until they saw this commercial. Check this out. Huh? What's this? What's this? Documentary? Man, right here, this is my business. Buying, selling, whatever, you know? Slow. This is off, man. Sales are down. Seems like half of my customers, they don't even need me anymore, you know? I mean, they're getting hot for free. Out of the medicine cabinets. How am I supposed to compete with that? You got kids? Well, next time something goes south with your kids, don't look at me, man. Ain't my problem. I didn't do it. Teens don't need a drug dealer to get I high. Wish I did. Safeguard your prescriptions. Safeguard your teens. They just told kids that they can get high from pain pills. You just saw it. <laughs> and nobody seemed to notice them pushing their pills on kids. And it's working. I run into people who are strung out all the time on pain pills. There was, there was a commercial a while back with the vice president of sales coming on telling people not to take more than the recommended dose of Tylenol. The first thing that pops into my head was, people take more than the people that take more than the recommended dose are not going to stop because this woman comes on TV and says that, Ty that Tylenol doesn't want them to. And Tylenol knows this. What they did was encourage other people to take more. They know it. It's a sales tactic. Um, Rick Simpson says, "Prove the bad." He asks if anybody has ever died from him. Well, here are your stats. All right, this is from drug, drugwarfacts.org, because I does like me some facts. Okay, there's tobacco with its 435,000 deaths per year. Let's see. Let's get to marijuana, because that number should be staggering. Let's see. There's marijuana. Oh, boy, here we go. What? Zero deaths? Are you serious? From marijuana? In fact, in the entire history of mankind, there has never been, ever, a death from marijuana. Not one. Ever. If no one gives a damn or cares for nothing but themselves, what future does mankind have? I see trees of green. Uh, Did you see the burn on that hand? That's bad. Our skin was designed to interact with the outside world. Your organs are very delicate. There's just no way for our organs to protect themselves from this attack. 
Medical sites themselves say the chemotherapy is a poison to people who don't need it. And from what I've learned and I'm about to share with you, it looks like it's a poison even if you have cancer. Radiation therapy uses x-rays or other high energy rays to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors. Radiation for Wilms, Wilms tumor usually comes from a machine outside the body, external radiation therapy. Radiation may be used before or after surgery and, and or chemotherapy. After several years, some patients develop another form of cancer as a result of their treatment with chemotherapy and radiation. Clinical trials are ongoing to determine if lower doses of chemotherapy and radiation can be used. Well, I looked at a few cancers. First, I chose one cancer because it's the one I'm most likely to get because smoking cigarettes make me cool. Kill, kill it. Hold it, hold it! Hey, what's your mind? What are you pitching Winston's at me for? You know I never smoked nothing else. Just practicing, Mr. Flintstone. Everybody knows that... Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Yeah. See? My wife found this site. It's hard to read as they openly put this information out there. This is the CancerLinksUSA.com page. With the, Wilhelm, with the Wilms tumor treatment information for patients that I just got done reading on the little clip there. And here's the quote that I just read. Okay, one of the scenes from Run From The Cure that stood out in my head was where the hand was burned severely from the, from the chemo spell. So back to lung cancer. Why not get some answers from chemo.net? After all, they're owned by Life Force Hospitals. This is directly off their page. Chemo.net slash lung.htm. Check this out. Okay? Okay? Okay, this is the chemo.net slash lung.htm. Small cell lung cancer. Chemo. 9% success rate. So, <clears throat> medium... Median survival for extensive small cell lung cancer is approximately 8 to 10 months and for a limited small cell lung cancer approximately 12 to 16 months. Recent pilot studies using con concurrent chemotherapy with twice daily irradiation have shown improved overall 9% overall 9% and complete approximately 8 to 9 percent response rates and median survival rates approximately two years. Wow! Two years. Patients who obtain complete response to chemotherapy and thus live longer are at particular risk to develop brain meta metastasis. That's like cancer and stuff. This complication can be reduced significantly with, with prophylactic cranial irradiation, although there have been concerns that some patients may develop radiation-related neuro neuropsychological disturbances. Oh, that's interesting. THC seeks out, attaches to, and activates two specific endocannabinoids that are, that are present in high amounts of lung cancer cells, Preet, uh, Preet says. That's from CBS Associated Press. THC seeks out, attaches to, and activates two specific endocannabinoids that are present in high amounts on lung cancer, cancer cells, Preet says. Moreover, other early research suggests that cannabinoids, cannabinoids compounds could help fight brain, prostate, and skin cancers as well, Preet says. Okay, this here is a medical journal. There's a website. This is the quote. In the context of the, of the Renaissance and the study of the therapeutic effects of cannabinoids, our findings show that these compounds may be considered promising anti-tumoral agents as they inhibit tumoral angiogenesis and growth in vivo with no significant side effects. For everyone talking about breast cancer, I caught this clip of an NBC News broadcast right here on YouTube, courtesy of C-H-R-Y-C-H-E-K, I'm assuming that's Cherry Check. Uh, the link to this video is, is of course, in the descriptions. No, yeah. Uh, I'm just showing the clip. Prior to what I'm going to show you, 
they're talking about concentrated cannabinoids killing breast, can breast cancer cells. Now, think about that for a moment, and then think about uh, a pound of quality marijuana, or hemp, or whatever you want to call it, it's still, it's still a lot of pretty bud concentrated into two ounces of Rick Simpson's hemp oil. Okay. The benefits may not stop there. Scientists say the cannabis compound may fight other aggressive cancers, including prostate cancer. The next step, animal studies, then clinical trials. So it may be several years before patients may benefit from a cannabis cancer fighter. I think it's a promising, um, a promising avenue in terms of the treatment for aggressive cancers, in which is really where we need treatments for. They've known about this for decades. Uh, and they're, and they're just now going to study it after all this time and now they want us to wait more years for some guy in a lab coat or lady to say yes Rick Simpson's hemp oil really is a cure the more money you spend on cancer the more cancer you get if you google life force hospitals you can see a very nice picture of a breast cancer cell just FYI and if all this isn't enough to make you think twice about chemotherapy think about this Chemotherapy gives you cancer. Don't. Uh, chemo can not only give you cancer, it can give the people who handle it cancer. And when you when not handled carefully, go. WashingtonPost.com Last March, the federal government issued an unusually detailed alert to the nation's 5.5 million health care workers. The powerful drugs used in chemotherapy can themselves cause cancer and pose a risk to nurses, uh, pharmacists, and others who handle them. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health issued the alert on chemotherapy drugs because human and animal studies have shown that they have the potential to cause cancer or reproductive problems, said Thomas Connor, a research biologist with the Institute. Some studies have found higher than expected prevalence of these ailments among, among health care workers, he said. Exposures can occur in a number of ways. The drugs can become airborne and be inhaled. They can collect on work surfaces and be absorbed through the skin. Uh, traces of them can be found on medical equipment, clothing, and in patient excreta. People, may, people have exposures every day, said Bill Borregen, I butchered his name, Occupational Health and Safety Director for the Washington-based Service Employees International Union, which represents about 875,000 health care workers. If you're, if you're pier piercing an IV bag and a drop of drug gets on your finger, you, you could be over the safe level. A drop. Seriously, a drop? Go. All right, WashingtonPost.com, page two. What if the cure? What if the cure is also a cause? Chemotherapy, the use of potent drugs to kill cancer cells, is more than sixty years old. The first such drugs were in, were nitrogen mustards originally developed as chemical warfare agents. Modern chemotherapy drugs are so strong by necessity that they can cause secondary cancers in patients to a, a healthy person. They are poison. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, lists nine chemotherapy drugs and two combinational therapies as known human carcinogens. Another nine drugs are listed as probable and ten as possible carcinogen. WashingtonPost.com, page three. For healthcare workers who come in contact with chemotherapy drugs, cancer isn't the only worry. According to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health Alert, the the drugs also can trigger adverse reproductive effects, including miscarriage, low birth weight, infertility, and birth defects. <laughs> but hey, what medicine doesn't these days, right? Most healthcare workers are clueless about how toxic these agents are. As it stands right now, Rick Simpson is, is claiming a 70% success rate. And a lot of that has to do with the damage already done to your body from the chemo and the radiation therapy. So let's see what this .gov has to say about the success rates of chemotherapy. The overall contribution of curative and adjuvant 
cytotoxic chemotherapy to five-year survival in adults was estimated to be 2.3% in Australia and 2.1% in the USA. Now, one thing I did want to point out was this off the DEA's webpage. It's a quote from the American Cancer Society. Justice.gov, DEA, marijuana position.html. The American Cancer Society does not advocate inhaling smoke nor the legalization of marijuana, although the organization does support carefully controlled clinical studies for alternative delivery methods, specifically a THC skin patch. Now, I tried skin patches for quitting smoking, cigarettes. They don't work. Now, maybe for some people, but obviously not for the majority or else the tobacco companies would be out of business. And even if they did work, you're not, you're not going to get enough THC and cannabinoids out of the skin patch to be effective. And why, and why does it have to be a skin patch and not hemp oil? Is the skin patch just so that we can give money to the pharmaceuticals? How did people survive before Big Pharma? I mean, how did we get by? And how will we survive them? Now, I'm not saying the pharmaceuticals haven't done some good for people somewhere. I'm just saying that I don't want their unnatural, dangerous side effects causing, side effect causing chemicals in my body if I can help it. If I get cancer, I am not going to do chemo or radiation, but I will record my doctor's appointments, I will take hemp oil, I will record video daily, and I will explain everything from the way I feel to eating habits. I will post it, and I will encourage anybody who arrives at the same decision to choose hemp oil over traditional medicines to do the same. Go. Because when there's enough people screaming, eventually the government listens. But people really have to scream. Because it seems to me that our government has got its MP3 player on way too loud when it comes to truly listening, listening to and exploring every option and means available to save human lives. Now keep in mind, that I am not a doctor, I am not a nurse, I am not a medical professional, and I am not your family. Well, maybe some of you I am. <laughs> but this, this is a decision you have to make on your own. I am just telling you that, telling you what my decision is. Nature recommends cannabis, and since I'm made from nature, maybe I should listen. The time has come to legalize marijuana, marijuana and expose the facts behind the myths. Our government and medical industry have have spread. Let the chips fall where they may. Facts are facts, and I don't know anybody who enjoys, who enjoys being lied to. And quite frankly, it pisses me right off. You're right. This is a stupid game anyway. We don't need this to have fun. Let's hang out. Smoke some weed and just relax. What? Smoke weed? No thanks, Darren. I think I'd rather play Russian roulette. Anybody that knows my wife and I know that we don't have very much money, but we still send what we can. Rick Simpson has found a cure for cancer, something that the healthcare industry has failed to do, and they're funded with billions of dollars. They know THC and cannabinoids cure cancer. My life is worth more than some well-to-do's profit margin, and yours is too. If you can afford it, please send Mr. Rick, Sim Mr. Rick Simpson something. I have it on good authority, he can't even afford gas. And I know that feeling too, but then again, I did not cure cancer. And when I think about it that way, I know in my heart, I have to send him something. If you cannot afford to send him anything, the cure is still free. Get detailed information on how to make it for free at www.phoenixtears.ca. Now, I wrote Phoenix Tears CA about donation methods available on their website, which offers only PayPal. And blow my mind, Rick Simpson took the time out of his busy schedule and to respond to my email. Now, I knew obviously the hemp oil curing not only cancer, but numerous diseases was huge. But it didn't really sink into my head until I saw that email. And I realized he still takes the time to actively run his website. The following is out of that email. Okay, so this is directly from my email from Rick Simpson. Things are tight for me over here right now, and any help you folks can, can, can send would be greatly appreciated. 
It amazes me that people will donate money to someone with cancer to buy their chemo, but they will give nothing to help people bring out the cure. I have been, I have been planning to do many seminars on hemp, on hemp medicine over here in the coming months, but due to the wishes of, of Jack Herrera, it seems that I am now the, the new leader of the hemp movement worldwide. This responsibility, along with all the people who are now contacting me make it impossible for me to go on the road and to do all these seminars. So in the coming months I will concentrate on doing internet seminars and articles with the hemp publications or hemp articles for the, the hemp publications. I feel that this would be a more effective way for me to reach the people. Uh, why go on the road to a few to talk to a few few thousand people when I can go on the internet and reach millions. I am only one man and the demands from people on, on me now are so extreme it seems that this is the only avenue for me to take. Thank you for your support and you can send your donations to my son. He will see that it gets to me. Please send donations in my son's name to this address. Mike Simpson, 739 Black River Road, GD Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, Canada, BOM1XO. Best wishes, Rick Simpson. If you know what I'm saying is true, and with all the evidence that is out there, how can you not? Then share this video. Yes, this video is slightly biased by my opinion, but here's something the anti-marijuana public service announcements won't do. Comments are wide open. Video comments. Wide open. Uh, so, prove how I'm wrong. Show me. If I'm wrong, prove it. We, uh, we may add to this video as, as more information becomes available. This is absolutely in no way, shape, or form all of the information that is out there. This is hopefully just a stepping stone in your own research that will lead you to your own conclusion on what to do with your life. It is your life. And nobody should have the right to tell you how to live it as long as you are not hurting anybody else in your own pursuit of happiness and long life. Good luck to everyone. And best wishes on your journeys.